Hello everyone, I'm Ginny and today we'll be taking a look at 5 mistakes, very common mistakes that beginners make when they're trying to play Legends of Runeterra. Now, we'll be touching on those mistakes one by one. I mean, they're not really ranked, so they're all equally important and uh, I don't know how frequently people they make them. I know that they make it a lot because when I was a beginner, I made them myself. We will also be talking about how to kind of fix them and it's kind of intuitive once you point it out, right? So let's get to it. Don't forget to subscribe for more Legends of Runeterra content and uh, yeah, let's go. So first we have a very easy one. Attack and lose all defenses for the next turn. This is something very prevalent in the starter ranks and it's a situation that ceases to exist once you start climbing the ladder and finding a little bit more knowledge about the game. This refers to those moments where you attack with everything every unit you have accomplishing pretty much nothing because you didn't have the best trades so you didn't have enough power to eliminate your enemy's units you lose all your units and leave yourself open for a powerful attack coming from your opponent as soon as the next star uh, as the next round starts if you're having trouble with this Try to make your place thinking about how the board is going to be by the start of the next round and play preserving or developing a board state that you will be able to work with. Second, not having their own win condition in mind. Not having your win condition in mind may be a problem that occurs even in intermediate ranks and it means that you're playing a given deck but you don't play with the right plan on how you're going to win the game. Let's take some examples. If you're playing a very aggressive deck, you probably want to be winning around turn 5 or 7, meaning that you need to play have in mind that if the game gets too long, you may not be able to close it out. If you're playing a mid-range deck, it probably means that you're aiming to win around turn 6 or 8, sometimes even 9, but it can get a little bit too long if you start pushing like that. Because maybe you have units that are very strong on the mid portions of the game, for instance, so you want to be playing defensively against aggressive decks and play aggressively against control decks. If you're playing a control deck, you probably want to be winning the game from turn 8 ahead, meaning that you want to be playing defensively until you can get the powerful combos out, right? Or your powerful cards ready to go. You have to always play your deck with a plan because if you don't know where you're going, you're probably going nowhere. Now third, not managing your mana efficiently. Now having mana for combat trick or deploying a unit on the board, what should I do? The amount of mana you should be saving is, is a variable, right? It changes from deck to deck and from situation to situation. For instance, um, let's say that you're on turn 6 and you're playing a mid-range Ash deck. You have harsh winds in your hand and your opponent decides to develop something before going to an attack. Therefore, the action goes to you. Now, should you choose to develop a unit and not have mana for harsh winds, or should you simply pass the turn so you're not left unprotected? This answer will vary according to what you have on your side of the board, but this type of question should always be in your mind, because a lot of the times having mana for your spells can make, the tra can make a trade that would be favorable for your opponent become a favorable trade for you, therefore changing the tides of the game and providing you with a higher probability of winning. So let's get this other example. Here I'm losing the game, right? This is pretty much a lost match. All my opponent had to do was to not attack, so my Garen, my both units would die next turn and then he would have a very, very clear way of winning. But my only way of winning would be if my opponent would get impatient and attack with all his units. Then I would be able to kill all of them and then I would finish the game off on the next turn. If I didn't do that, I would have lost the game completely. And it was a lost game, I was counting it on being a lost game, but since my opponent was impatient and he kind of tried to rush it out he ended up losing the game because of that and all that because I decided not to drop anything and stick with the mana to play judgment and then all his units died and I've won the game because of it now fourth 
trying to rank up with decks that they've made. This is a complicated topic, but mainly, since you're a beginner, you have no knowledge about the meta, you have no knowledge about what the cards are truly what, what cards are truly strong and what are not, right? So it's fine to have fun with the meme decks and trying to create decks. I actually highly recommend you to do that. Because, you know, that's a card game, and that's what card games are really about, in my opinion. But before trying to go experimental, pick decks that you already know that they work, because they're good on the meta. I'm probably going to be leaving a link down below, so you can see um, how the meta is shifting. This link is probably going to be working in all times, so it's not for this current meta, for instance. So you can build knowledge and self-confidence, right? So as the time goes by, you improve your deck building abilities little by little. Because there's nothing wrong with net decking in the beginning since no one has been born a pro. Now fifth and last, not being patient. Um, guys, ranks matters less than you think. You should learn the game and have fun in, with the process. This may be one of the most important tips, if not the most valuable tip that I have for beginners. And they're actually not only valuable for beginners, to be honest with you. Always remember that playing games should be a fun experience above everything else, so you shouldn't push yourself too hard, because in the end, getting a higher rank will only provide you with um, a different profile picture and flex points for being in a higher rank. And it's worth remembering that the ranking system rewards grinding, meaning that even though you're at a higher rank, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're amazing at the game or, or anything like that. It may actually mean, and in most cases will, mean only that you spam strong decks that in most cases you didn't even make an effort to create since most people net deck. So take your time, have fun learning the game and focus on playing better because ranks really means too little to be your main concern.